Schefter. Good morning, guys. What do Good we morning, need to Good morning, Sam. Thanks very much. Welcome to the Domino's pregame headquarters and more. We've got two quarterbacks going tonight against each other from the same draft class. What stands out about it? You know, you look a little older today, by the way. <laughs> uh, listen, Andy Reid was the head coach and Matt Nagy was the offensive coordinator in Kansas City when they jumped from 27 to 10 in the NFL draft in April to take Patrick Mahomes as a quarterback. Today, the Bears who took Mr. Trubisky with the second pick overall will be the first meeting between the first two quarterbacks taken in that 2017 draft. We're not even talking about Deshaun Watson. Since that time, in basically two seasons, the Iranian MVP Mahomes has thrown 73 touchdown passes, Trubisky 48 touchdown passes. That game tonight at Soldier Field. And more two more quarterbacks from the same draft class start against each other today for the very first time. Daniel Jones is back in the lineup for the Giants. Dwayne Haskins starting for the Washington Redskins. And this is a game that can be classified as the race for chase because the loser of this game will have the inside track on the second overall pick. And if the Bengals go, Joe Burrow's number one, which isn't a given. But if they do, then the loser of this game today could wind up with Chase Young, the great Ohio State defensive end. The race for Chase is on. And the Baltimore Ravens have a lot of business to take care of. First of all, they got to beat the Browns to clinch that number one seed in the AFC. They have to avenge that loss in week four, and they've won 10 straight since then. But for Lamar Jackson, the presumptive MVP at this point, he's more concerned with individual goals once they notch this win. But with Mark Ingram just short of 1,000 yards rushing and Hollywood Marquise Brown just one touchdown short of setting a rookie Ravens record. So Lamar Jackson not worried about himself win the game, and then get his guys, Mark Ingram and, and Hollywood Brown, a little bit of uh, attention as well. Sam? Yeah, I think everything's going to work out for Lamar Jackson. It sure has so far this year. Let's talk about these games we got to see yesterday, guys. I don't know about you, but that, that felt like gift after gift after <laughs> gift. Three day. straight yeah. awesome games. Let's start with the big one in the AFC, the Patriots taking on the Bills. Let's start at the end of the first half. Only... 10 seconds left to play. The Bills down 10 to 3 with the ball on the one. And Josh Allen, you gotta love a big man touchdown, Teddy. Yeah, this team grinds. This Buffalo Bills team came to play. They wanted to go into Foxborough and take that division from the Patriots. Then in the fourth quarter, they were tied at 10 at the half, then up 17 13. Tom Brady, he's a dual threat, Teddy. You know that. <laughs> Wait a second, Tommy. Be careful out there. But you see how important this game was to the Patriots. They emphasized it all week. Playoff and atmosphere. Under 10 minutes left. Patriots find Julian Edelman. This is not a surprise. This guy's been doing it for a long time. Yeah, this guy's beat up. He's hurting. He went to the blue tent to get checked out for a head injury. Came back and made a big play. Later in the drive, Rex Burkhead had a fumble early. Right here, he comes through for him when they need him. Power football was back in New England yesterday. They ran it well on a very good Bills defense. And Daniel's fired up. Bills have one more chance. Fourth and goal on the 15. Josh Allen, he's going to scramble a little. Oh, and throws it up to Cole Beasley. You think maybe? Nope. Not long enough arms. That would have been a good mossing, though, Randy, right? And after the game, Bill Belichick, about as fired up as you see Bill Belichick. That's the way to compete, fellas. That's the way to compete. It wasn't perfect, but you guys competed your ass off, and that was the difference. All right, so look, this is very simple now, okay? This is a playoff game. Miami's a playoff game. If we beat Miami, then we get a, a bye. If we don't, then we'll be playing the next week. Look, we, we need everybody. We need everybody. All right, so let's enjoy this one. Let's relax a little bit here. Come back ready to go. This is a big week. We're in the playoffs. We are in the playoffs now. AFCA East champs. Congratulations. Yeah. Well, Bill pretty much did my job for me there. The Patriots clinch a bye with a win next week against the Dolphins. New England still has an outside chance at the number one seed if they win next week. And the Ravens lose their last two games. As for the Bills, they're locked into the five seed in the AFC playoffs. So, Teddy, look, there was a lot in that game for both teams that you take away from it. What's your biggest takeaway after watching that one? just that there was something missing from the New England Patriots that I've counted on every single week. And what they've counted on also is takeaways from the defense, block punts, scores on defense, Gilmore interceptions, high tower of Vanoy taking the ball away. They didn't have one takeover at all. They did not have a big special teams impactful play. 
but they still won the game. They found a different way to win the football game, led by the offense. But didn't it look like Patriots football again? They like ran they the football. Yeah. They used the fullback. They spread the ball around. Nine different guys caught the ball. In the play-action game from Tom Brady, his play-action fakes were impeccable yesterday. And then he had one incompletion the entire day on play-action passes. So I think, like we saw last year, the Patriots are going to have to reinvent themselves on offense late in the season. I'm talking like the last two weeks of the season. And that's the identity that they're going to carry with them through the playoffs. But do not count this team out. A lot of people are counting this team out. That would be a mistake once again. Well, I'll, I'll say this about them. I mean, it was an impressive offensive showing for sure. 450 yards against this Buffalo Bill defense. But one thing that I was more impressed with, it, it, even, even more so than the uh, Patriots, was Josh Allen. Sure. Guys, I'm telling you, get ready. It's not just going to be Lamar Jackson winning MVPs. This kid right here, everybody knew he was a project going in. But his development, he's at least a year ahead of schedule. When it came down to fourth and one, who's... who's Hands you oh, put it under right Josh here, right. Allen. Yeah. He's got no way is he going to make this first down, but he guts it out. This is what he does, man. Let me handle it. Face mask. I don't care. I'm going to run for it anyway. He just has that guts, that competitiveness. Oh, and by the way, he's six foot five, 240 pounds, a phenomenal athlete, and probably the strongest arm in the National Football League. Watch out, NFL, because this this guy is going to be one of the, the uh, uh, future stars of the league, in my opinion. You're talking about some concerns for the Patriots. I am concerned about the Patriots, and mainly on the offensive side of the ball. You just posted up that, that, uh, that play with Julian Edelman coming back in the fourth quarter. You're talking about going under the blue tent um, uh, with the concussion. Then he came back and was able to make the big plays. Did everybody see what was going on when Julian Edelman was out the game? Leslie Frazier's in that defense was praying on the New England Patriots. Nobody was out there making plays. When Julian Edelman came back, he electrified the team. He electrified the whole stadium. So just by looking looking ahead, Julian Edelman is all they have. They have the young wide receiver, Roberts, trying to put him in the mix. But that is not enough. You drafted Harry, uh, the first uh, round pick. And then you brought in Muhammad Sanu. He made a couple in, uh, mental errors out there this time of year, Little Teddy. Things, yeah. You know situational football is very big in New England this time of year. So you asking me about my concerns. It's the pass catchers for the New England Patriots going forward. When Julian Edelman's out, who's going to show up? Edelman's all they have right now, but I do see them picking some things up, mainly Muhammad Sanu. And you heard Bill Belichick talking about the importance of the buy. Of course, he wants the buy, but two critical reasons why. Not only is that you got a 42-year-old quarterback that can, that can use a week off, but also Julian Edelman, like you're talking yes. about. Beat up. He's been had to, had to do everything this year because there's no one else. I got to play every single snap. Head injury, put me back out there. It's my shoulder, it's my knee. Put me back out there. Players like that need a week off for them to make a run for a championship. Matt, after what you said about this team kind of finding their identity, which it usually doesn't take them this late in the season to find their offensive identity, now seeing what you saw yesterday against a good defense, is this a Super Bowl team? The, uh, for sure. For sure a Super Bowl team. And I'll tell you what excites me the most is they lost Devlin, their fullback. And so they had to get creative. Rex, you were talking about it all season. Maybe it's an extra lineman. Get creative. Think outside the box. What'd they do? They took a linebacker, Elandon Roberts, number 58. They moved him over to the offensive side Banger. of the ball. Yeah. And he is learning the position <laughs> on the fly. You saw Rex Burkhead's touchdown. That was a physical, physical touchdown run. Go back and watch that play again and look at the lead block on that play. That's the kind of identity that can win late in the year, December, January, yes, hey, even February. Let me throw this in there. With the, with the production of Rex Burkhead, if the Patriots want to go further like people thinking they will, Rex Burkhead is going to have to be a key factor in that offense. He does good in the run and the pass game. Well, they're simply trying to run the ball more. I mean, the last two games, they ran 49% of the time. First 13, only 38. So they're definitely focusing on running the ball more late in the year. I know it's kind of the B story in this whole game, but when you look at what the Bills have done and are doing this year, it's two losses to the Patriots, yes, but by a combined 13 points. It just feels team. like they are right on the cusp of something special and sure could be in the playoffs this year. And they'll get year. another chance. You know, yes. They might get to play those guys again in a couple weeks. Mm. Yes, the division isn't quite the breeze that it used to be. Speaking of breeze, Drew Brees oh. is on the right. See that? You like that, fellas? He's <laughs> on the road in Nashville. I mean, coming off a career. Always taking work. The first capital of the United States. The first university. But today, first place is up for grabs as an old enemy returns. The boy.
boys are back in town. The link will be live today as two bitter rivals try to hang on to playoff hopes. Dallas Cowboys won four straight against the Eagles, but this one would be more meaningful. And despite all the injuries, all the struggles, all the unmet expectations and anger, there is excitement today about a game that means the most so far this year. There hasn't been this much on the line. 